Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Cloak and Dagger. A great episode. It's kind of interesting, and I figured, you know, you kind of already had that feeling that things were going to fall apart. Because last episode, they got everything they wanted. And now, I like, the obviously, the comparison, because obviously you have the story being told in this um in class of kind of like the hero's recession of just kind of like oh they kind of got everything they want but then like the tire gets flat and they basically fall backwards not just to where they started but even worse than where you start off with them at and you see that in both cases with Ty and Tandy because for both of them they're lashing out because of just everything in Tandy's case it's like learning that this person she admired she fought so hard for found out that he was an abusive asshole like it just it changes everything because she looked up to her dad she admired him she like honored him so much and it turns out oh he wasn't worth honoring he's just some piece of crap person like I fought so hard I sacrificed so much for you I worked so hard to, at this point to try and clear your name and everything and it's like was it even worth it in the end and in Ty's case it's the fact is that his parents won't acknowledge it he's like I told you I would told you the truth but you guys acting like it's not okay his dad's like okay just focus on he's like school work no, this is the guy that killed Billy. I told you that Billy was a hero, that Billy wasn't some bad guy. His mom, don't tell me who Billy was. And it's just, and but because of this, they both lash out in different ways. Ty beats some dude up at school. Kind of one of the people that was on his team that kind of calls. It's probably, he probably, we didn't hear what he said, but he probably said something to set Ty off just because Ty just was looking for an excuse because of all the anger and rage he has built up in him. And it's just kind of like, he spent so long keeping that caged up ever since Billy died but now it's just like for him it's like it didn't change anything you know his family still kind of broke it in the fact that it is even they're like oh we'll have to investigate Connors it's not like a slam dunk of oh he's arrested and immediately dealt with it. it's like no it's turning into this whole thing and it sucks like and in Tandy's case she's falling back into old habits but she's kind of she's kind of keep doing what she did initially stealing from people but in a different light because now it seems that Tandy can now steal from people's hope that want, like that's kind of her new drug. Like it seemed like she was doing drugs too, but it seems like this becomes her main vice now is getting close to people and then taking their hopes away. And like it gives her almost like this euphoric feeling because Tandy herself is lost hope completely. And I think by taking other people's hope, it's filling that void that's in her. You know, because that void initially was filled with like, hey, uh, she dealt with it by like, oh, putting her all towards this mission of clearing her dad's name. And now it's just all, you know, like both her entire kind of very self-destructive modes right now. She even does it to Mina because when she looks at Mina, it's just a reminder like of Mina and Ivan. It's like you're together. You're happy. It's like it's so messed up. It's like you have this perfect relationship. It's not only like, oh, before it might have been like, oh, it's because you're with your dad. It's like, no, because your dad's actually a good person because now I fought so hard to have that. I wanted my dad. You keep that good memory of my dad but it's like no my dad's a piece of crap but look at you you get to have this happy ending and I don't get to have it and Ivan's talking about how much of a good and great guy um, Nathan wasn't it just sticks the dagger in deeper and deeper and it just gets she even gets even more pissed because Mina's like oh hey why don't you work at um rocks on with me like oh we'll both continue our dad's work which pisses her off even more I mean because the sad thing is Mina doesn't know everything she said that without knowing like what this all really meant she doesn't know that rocks on's kind of covering his tracks doing all this dirty stuff because like Ivan's trying to leave her out of all of that so the only people who really know like Ivan doesn't even completely know but Tandy's the only one that's got all the pieces together and it's just for her it just sounds like it's like you're re really no and so she tried and she steals um Mina's um, hopes because we see a little bit of it in a sense that she killed a fly I guess it's because before we saw she was very caring about plants and stuff like that but with that hope ripped away from her we even saw all the plants in her hopes like kind of withered away and just I guess it's, it's kind of a representation of who she was her hopes kind of made her into this very positive person and I guess maybe without that hope she just doesn't care anymore Ty's talking to uh, the father about like how the priest about like the fact of the matter is it's kind of like you don't understand my pain because this priest is kind of like being like you need to keep going on with the battle but you need to end the war this war has been raging ever since Billy died you've been waging this war but it's like you don't have to give up the battle just let go of all this anger and stuff inside you but like Ty just can't because it's just kind of like because he wanted things to change and he kind of learns more about the priest, about the fact is that 
Because in his mind, he was thinking like, yeah, the fact of the matter is you use religion as an escape. This, These walls are supposed to be, and the scripture and this belief is all supposed to be your shield. It's supposed to keep you safe and comfortable. But during the struggle and everything, he sees into him and realizes like, oh, he was a drunk driver and killed a little girl. And I'm sure that's what really pushed him in the direction that he's in. And obviously, because when Ty does that, he does bring people's fear to the surface. So you can see it was kind of like fresh in the dude's mind because it like when they do that they, they kind of bring your both your hopes and your uh fears to the surface to kind of dab into which makes you wonder could ty do the same thing i mean assume because their abilities are reflections of each other so anything that tandy can do with her power i would assume that ty can do i mean it makes you wonder could you also transfer that to people i mean and in tandy's case could she ever give it back is the question you know I mean, what would be, I mean, because it gives her a euphoric feeling having hope, but what would it do to Ty if he absorbed fear? I mean, would there even be a reason? Would there be a benefit to it? I mean, could, like I said, could he use that more offensively, take someone else's fear and then inject it into another person? Like, you know, I mean, his main thing might just be the fact is that he can bring it to the surface. That might be how his ability adapts. Whereas hers is like, oh, I can steal people's hope. Maybe his is just simply bringing the fear to the surface. Because I don't know if you necessarily bringing a hope, someone's hope to the surface really it's something that really manifests itself, like the, someone's fear does. But I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe it can. I mean, things get even worse between Tandy and Ty because they kind of blow at, it, at each other. Because they're not just lashing out at the people in their lives; they're lashing out at each other about like, oh, like Ty, you need to grow up and realize that things don't change, uh, because that's what Tandy believes. And then you know, but that's just her lashing out. And then he just kind of lashes out at her about how she's handling this whole situation because he caught her doing what she was doing to Liam because when he was inside the father's uh, fears he opened a door and it you know because they are bound and connected so because it seems for one she broke out Liam because she was falling back into old habits too and she she talked about the fact that the matter is she wanted to get married and stuff like that and it's like oh the fact is you're talking like that I wonder is it because she absorbed Mina's hopes and it kind of made her start talking like that like i think it, besides just a euphoric effect maybe there is something beyond that maybe it does kind of make her like a little bit of who they are kind of gets flooded her system i mean if you want to think about it scientifically maybe that is it just purely like this sense of euphoria floods her system and kind of has her talking like that to be fair maybe that's just because i mean now in retrospect it's like what she was trying to do was steal liam's hope as well but to be fair it's like well she already knew what his hope was, so she knew if she talked about it, said the right things, that she bring his to the surface so she can steal it. So once again, just because of what they're going through, they're just lashing out on all these different people that they care about, you know? I mean, Ty kind of stopped her, but I mean, I don't know, maybe she drained all of it or maybe she drained a good chunk of it. Because later on when she checks back, like the statue is knocked over, all the money is gone. So I assume Liam's, I guess that's supposed to imply that Liam stole from her because he just kind of, what he felt for her was taken away when she absorbed that, you know, part of him. So, I mean, because that's the thing, we still don't 100% know what the full damage is for her doing that. Like, does someone's psyche, like, does it completely strip them of who they were? Like, does a part of them die? And like I said, does that, is it ever something she could ever give back? Or is it the moment she takes it away, there's no giving it back, it's gone forever. So maybe that person can never be 100% whole again? It makes you wonder about that. Then you had the whole Vita situation because for Vita, her aunt was searching around town and like her, her aunt is definitely like, obviously you kind of already knew it, but you see it even more in this episode that she is connected because she sees one of like the pipelines that's connected to Roxxon and she knows whatever they're doing and they're drilling is connected to what's coming towards the city. And she's like, basically it can only come down to the divine pair to kind of fix this situation. Vita didn't really believe her, didn't really know for sure, but then, like, she tries to talk to Ty, and Ty almost brings it up until they get interrupted by Tandy, but what was interesting is Tandy tried to do her new trick to Vita, but Vita fought it back, so it's like, obviously, there's some, like, major juju going on with, like, Vita's family, like, that ain't no BS, that there's something there, it might be some kind of, like, they might be on the more mystical side of things, whereas like Cloak and like, you know, Tandy and Ty might be more on the like science fictional realm. Maybe they kind of tap more in the magical realm. I mean, New Orleans kind of like that magical area is kind of tied into like, you know, magic from the land and stuff like that. So, but I mean, who knows? Maybe that's purely just Vita herself being strong willed and it's like, no, get, no, fighting her back like that. So I don't know. 
like I said, I mean, it's kind of incredible all the stuff that went down because we ended up finding out from Ty when he had a conversation with his mom because his mom was blowing up at people at work too. Like everyone was hit hard this episode because of just everything. It's just like everyone kind of fell into like a recession and stuff like that. And it's like either the hero dies or a villain is born it can be kind of the aftermath of this because it's a situation of we usually as human beings can't always see our like see ourselves for what we become or what we're doing it's not until we look through the eyes of another person do we really kind of like does it really sink in like oh wow so they kind of saw a little bit of themselves in each other like and i guess that's the um that aspect of their abilities too because he was there kind of seeing her at her lowest by seeing her do that like it's not like he wanted to but it's because it's like because of their ties they can only really see each other through each other's eyes you know they can only see themselves through each other's eyes and the sense, at least like get a bigger picture of who they are. So Ty ends up talking to his mom and it's like the reason why her and his dad never did anything is because Billy was killed by a cop. We believed you, but we knew if we pressed it, what was going to happen? Eventually, he would have come for you, the only witness. But he was like, I wasn't afraid. It's like, well, that's good for you, his mom says. But it's like, me and your dad were terrified because we lost Billy. We weren't going to lose you, too. But for him, it's like, what did you expect me to do? Billy died in front of me. You expected me to just walk away and just, like, forget all about it? It's like, what about my kids? What about my own situation? Because she's like, the fact of the matter is you doing what you did. All that did was just put a target on your back. And Ty's just kind of like... I mean, it's, it's hard to say, like, I mean, because Ty is driven by his rage and stuff like that, because if he had went about it maybe a different way, maybe there could be kind of like a better outcome for this. But because the way things are now, because he did that, like Connors is going to do everything he can to put everything on you, like put you in his crosshairs and, you know. And that basically his mom is like, you are still alive. Billy is gone. We got to accept the fact is that he's dead. And it's just kind of like, I can say it's just, it's, it's, it's a hard thing from one side of you kind of like, no, like why should he let it go? But at the same time, it's like, because it will consume him. Like it, cause it's just, it's this burning fire that's just raging on in both of them. And if they don't stop it, it will consume them. You know, they'll kind of get lost to it and not just them, everything and everyone that they care about will be swept up in it. And like, it's already kind of happening, you know? Because uh, kind of tying some things in, like O'Reilly's at the bar, Connors is there talking about like, oh yeah, uh, Fuchs, which I kept calling him Fucks uh, last episode. Because I saw his name and I just couldn't, for, like, when it was time to record, I forgot how she pronounced it. But when it came to Fuchs, he slept there and be like, oh yeah, such a tragedy would happen to him. And she attacks him and he beats the crap out of her. And there's all those damn cops in a bar who don't do jack shit. So I guess it's kind of like... They think she's just a drunk cop that's just kind of starting shit. Or maybe they're kind of like, oh, like, let him do his thing. Like, you and Fuchs kind of, like, stepped out of the ring, kind of like, y'all tried to take a swing at him, and that was your fault. Like, we're not going to get involved. Like, that's what I'm thinking, or that, or they're just dirty cops themselves. Or, you know, maybe they're just, like I said, maybe they're just ignorant to the situation. I mean, so, like, the fact is that they just let him beat on her like that, and just stepping back makes me think it's got to be, like, the former... In the sense, uh, the, rather the latter, in the sense of like they they either know much because they're in it themselves, or because they simply just don't want to get involved because they know how things are and they've just accepted things. Once again, kind of like accepted that things won't change and can't change and just leave it at that. But the tie-in turns out, and especially considering Ty, is the fact is it seems like they're framing him for Fuchs murder. Which now Ty's on the run for that, which is like, this is, I mean, what's the easiest way to take Ty out? Frame him for murder and get other people to take care of Ty. Oh, at least if you, t because the evidence is being reviewed and stuff like that. But with this, it's kind of like, if Ty's taken out, then it kind of brings into question everything. Because Ty's the only other witness. And if they, you know, probably do the same thing to O'Reilly, make her disappear too, there won't be anyone else to kind of deal with. I wonder how, to, in fact, did he frame Ty for everyone to think it I mean maybe it's just him pulling the connections that he has to kind of do that so but things aren't good on Tandy's front either because when she gets home it turns out the assassin that killed Greg has her mom now too so it's up to her to save her mom Ty's on the run and things are getting worse in New Orleans because when Mina is out there she sees two people near one of the pipes it bursts and they become terrors 
So once again, it's just kind of I'm glad that uh, the previous episode kind of straightened that in my head that that isn't just something that happened inside Ivan's head. That's exactly what happened at the rig and seeing that kind of happen now. It's going to be very interesting, especially because catching glimpses of the next episode makes you think like, oh, like obviously all the places that. Vita's aunt went to were probably places like without realizing it probably every single place she passed was probably somewhere in particular or like one of those pipelines is or at least an area where when the pipelines burst it's all going to hit fill the city up so you're going to have a whole city filled with terror so like I said a great episode next week's episode is the season finale and I'm so excited to see how this all ends up playing out but really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.